All right, so on my last road trip, I nearly froze to death. Well, me and my friend Zach, when we went up to Canada, it was one of the coldest days of the year. We had no heat, and it was not good. There are a couple of issues, one of which is the old engine had a vacuum pump on. I went with the Hydro Boost brake unit to eliminate the need for a vacuum pump, and the only thing that uses vacuum that's left on the truck is the heating system. So these are vacuum lines here and that's what actuates all of your blend doors and changes circuits so that you know you can go from defrost to feet to hands and all that. So I have no vacuum right now that's what this is here. So to fix that issue came up with this sucker here. The truck has compressed air with the engine driven air compressor. So this is a solenoid valve and a Venturi and a vacuum pressure switch. So basically what will happen is when you turn on the heating system it will send power to this vacuum pressure switch and if it needs vacuum it will close it'll open this valve here which will send air through and it'll suck all the air out of the system that there's a check valve so that it can't bleed back once all this shuts off so we just have to figure out how to mount it and then we got to get it plumbed in there's a bracket that I pulled off of like right here I'm thinking about using that'll be a good place for it I don't think this is gonna fix the heat because the heat is the only thing that's actually cable driven so the blend door that actuates between heat and hot and cold, that's actually a cable. It's not a vacuum thing, but at least we could then redirect the lukewarm air to our hands. Uh, the other issue with the system is I put my reservoir down here. I thought it looked a little neater being kind of out of the way and it is too low. It's like a never ending cycle. You add more and it just pushes it out. Uh, it usually the level that it finds is just above the fins. So I've never been too concerned about it. The engine doesn't overheat. But if you look, the heater hoses are just above the reservoir. So chances are the, the uh, heater core has an air pocket in it and it's not getting any hot coolant flowing through it. So we're gonna change some things up with the reservoir. I'd like to find a different reservoir because you can see mine, the coolant hose comes out the side of it there right next to my rusty air filter. And um, so I'd like to put the coolant reservoir right here on the firewall because I think it'll fit there without any real issue. But then my coolant line is gonna run this way and I'm gonna have to like route it back somehow. And so we're gonna set about fixing these two issues and hope that that fixes my heat because we got another road trip coming up with the truck. And this one's a little bit longer. So although it is, it's a beautiful day out today. It is like 58 according to my watch. So it's pretty much summertime here. We're going to get the pool out here in a minute. So we're going to get to this. Maybe I'll change that air filter too, because that doesn't look too hot. Maybe I should fix the hole right there where you can see the tire. So we went ahead and got our solenoid and our Venturi mounted up here to the firewall. We went ahead and got it wired in as well. The blower motor has constant 12 volts anytime the heating system is on, so we went ahead and just tied right into that. That way this valve will only open if the heating system is on and it's calling for vacuum. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and neaten up some of these things. It's all plumbed in, got the airline ran as well. So we're gonna neaten up the wires a little bit. All right, so I think I finally found a coolant reservoir that's gonna work for us. This is actually off of, uh, I believe it was a 2007 Ford Freestyle. Uh, and it happens to have the one inch nipple on it that we were looking for and it's fairly compact which is also what we were looking for. This is like the 10th reservoir I bought and I think this one's actually gonna work for us. We're just gonna go ahead, go ahead and make some bracketry so that we can get it mounted up because unfortunately they build these for each vehicle, you know, and you can't, they're not really interchangeable. So let's get to work building some sort of uh, bracket for this. This should work. All right, well, that should work for us. So this will mount to the firewall of the truck bolt right up and then this should uh, bolt right up to that perfect let's go get this thing installed all right so we already got our rib nuts installed up here on the uh, firewall so our coolant tank is going to go right here and if i measured right we'll still be able to get to all the bolts so we can adjust the valves again next week All right, so the reservoir is in and it fits perfectly and it gets the
coolant level just above my heater core hoses and the level here is about even with the top of my radiator so we should this should help out a lot keeping the radiator full and uh, hopefully this helps with our heat situation because we're not gonna go through that again so now we just need to get this hooked up hopefully i can do it without losing too much coolant all right guys so the venturi system is in it's all wired up plumbed in and the exhaust there i just kind of looped around and i put a muffler on it not that you can hear it when the truck's running anyways but It'll help keep down some of the noise. Oh yeah, I'll give you a little, little test. Of, I'll show you the uh, Venturi in action. Key has to be on and the heat actually has to be on. So if you put it in off, it won't run at all. So then you can hear it out there. So that's basically just using the pressurized air from our air system, blowing it through a Venturi and sucking it out of the cooling system so that the uh, vacuum diaphragms can open and close. You can kind of hear it pulsates. And uh, I think that's just due to where I put the uh, sensor. If I were to move the sensor elsewhere, I think the system, it would work a little bit better and it wouldn't sound like a machine gun. For now, it's better than what we had. So we can actually switch, you know, to floor or defrost or whatever so should get us by we also got the coolant new coolant reservoir all hooked up and plumbed in you can see it's already leaking so that's cool um, we do still have kind of an issue with the cooling system and that is the top of the radiator sits above like everything else and so if air gets into the top of this radiator there's no way for it to get back out and fill up with coolant um, there's also an issue because that radiator cap is vented, so when it gets over 16 pounds, it lets air and coolant out. And then it's supposed to be designed to expel it into a bottle and then suck it back in. And we don't have a bottle on that end, so what happens is the cooling system gets hot, and then when it cools off, it sucks air back in on the radiator side. And I've only driven this like twice since getting the reservoir in, and it's already I just pulled the cap and it was already you know down about halfway between the fins and the and the lid so uh, i'm going to try to get a like a blank radiator cap i had one originally when i started this project and it just never really sealed right and uh so i'm gonna see if i can find one of those all right so that is a wrap on this video trying to get the heat to work i guess it would be good to actually like take it out and see if the heat actually works now it's got to be better than it was so um, we are going to work on getting a different cap for this and figuring that out. Keep you guys updated on that. All right, so thanks for watching the video. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit that like button. Leave a comment down below. Let me know how you would have done things differently here. And consider subscribing. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks. Have a good day.